actually that question of what is ethics, it's, it's all of these things. It's, it's the Quranic tradition, law, theology, but also a cultivation of virtue. Hi, I'm lucky to be here with Dr. Zargar today, and he's going to be answering a few questions on his work related to ethics. It's very good to see you. Thank you for nice joining you. us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay, so the first question I have is across disciplines, ethics means different things to different scholars. What is ethics to you? Uh, that's a great that's a great question, actually, because um, one thing that interested me specifically was what is ethics in in the in the different Islamic traditions, because um, if you look at the history of um, Muslim intellectual activity, you have uh, a rich tradition of uh, what we could call law, the study of Islamic law, um, which isn't separate from from ethics at all, um, but uh, developed in a sort of parallel to another tradition that dealt with the cultivation of of virtue, which is called the akhlaq tradition. And um, what interested me is uh, that most discussions of, of ethics were really sort of focused on either legal discussions in Islam, because they, the legal discussions give you a lot to talk about. They're complicated. There's um, like a whole legal legal theory uh, called usul of fiqh, the principles of jurisprudence, um, or uh, theological ethics. Uh, which dealt with, a, 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 you know, sort of meta-ethical questions about the nature of, you know, um, the, the nature of morality. Um, but the uh, the akhlaq tradition that I mentioned, the the, the cultivation of virtues tradition, uh, it wasn't usually thought of as as being very exciting. Um, partly because uh, there. Uh, there are many writings that can be seen as sort of derivative of, um, you know, Greco-Roman Mediterranean sort of sources. And then um, partly because I think it wasn't really easily identified. Uh, it, when it fell outside of that pattern, people didn't see it as virtue ethics or didn't see it as interesting when it was. So in a very difficult, is, is a very complicated way of saying that actually that question of what is ethics in the tradition of some, that was a really interesting question for me because it's it's all of these things. It's it's the Quranic tradition. It's uh, so it's scripture and and the sayings of saints and uh, law, theology, but also a cultivation of virtue. And so, I was always interested in that. I've been interested in that last part of it. Right, that's very interesting. So, do you think that you could tell me more about like your work in connection to ethics specifically? Sure, happy to. So um, this really came to fruition in my with my second book, The Polished Mirror. Uh, that was where I tried to um, I, I, tr I tried to basically make a case that we could call Islamic virtue ethics. We could uh, study Islamic virtue ethics as a combination of different um, genres of writing uh, and practice. Uh, genres of writing and traditions of practice uh, that, that Muslims have been doing for, for many centuries. Um, the genres of writing would be that sort of uh, philosophical ethics, philosophical virtue ethics tradition uh, that would look a lot like the Aristotelian virtue ethics that you might imagine. And uh, that's a part of it. But what I try to, what I try to, to, to argue is that um, included in that should be uh, writings that have focused on self-perfection uh, within the Muslim tradition, especially Sufism, for example. So uh, Sufism is a long-standing, uh, uh, you know, uh, approach to knowledge uh, w within Islam that focuses on uh, a pathway to human perfection that could be undertaken through a teacher. It could be undertaken through uh, books and, and reading and learning independently. It could be undertaken simply by th through meditation um, and, and, and uh, devotional practice. So uh, the, the Polish Mirror, my book, tried to say, you know, we can call Islamic virtue ethics 
all of these things. You can put them together. And the focus on stories and storytelling was another thing that struck me that's shared by all of them. That's very interesting. So has ethics always been a large part of writing in your works or has it just been something that's you know, new into what you want to incorporate into it? It's something that I slowly came to. So I, well, I began as someone who was really interested in literary studies. Um, but the sorts of literature that I was interested in um, had this ethical component to them. Uh, and I, and to me, uh, it, it was becoming really difficult to study one without the other. I mean, and in fact, there's a kind of dishonesty um, to, let's say, well, let's take, for example, Rumi. I don't know if you've heard of the Persian poet Rumi. Some people have. It, it was this trend in like the early 2000s where people would um, have Rumi quotes as their like email sign off signatures. Um, it wasn't really Rumi, but that's okay. It was like a kind of a hippie version of Rumi. But I, I was uh, disappointed in the way uh, Rumi is often studied. Uh, Rumi's poetry is meant to awaken something within the human spirit, to drive a person to become better in a multidimensional way. So um, better in how they deal with others and how they deal with themselves and better sort of vertically in how they think about transcendent, you know, uh, transcendent matters and all that. Um, so if I'm reading Rumi in the same way that let's say I would read um, I don't know, let's say Shakespeare, or uh, there, there's an ethical component in Shakespeare, but let's say I would read Rumi in the same way I would read some, you know, something that some author who wasn't sort of intentionally um, infusing their work with, with this ethical component. If I'm reading them the same way, am I reading uh, Rumi uh, honestly? And am I really getting, uh, you know, to the, to the crux of the text? I would say no. Right. Um, what I'm not saying is, I mean, there's another way to read Rumi, which is completely in a completely sort of um, con confessional devotionist devotional way. I'm, I'm not saying that either. But what I'm saying is that that ethical component is, is very important. And that increasingly became uh, interesting to me. And as it did, and I tried to uncover, uh, you know, what was going on, it led to me seeing uh, Islamic virtue ethics as 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 maybe as a field that, you know, we could kind of redefine and rethink and, and look at um, closely. To me, what makes Islamic studies exciting, and this is, this is connected to, to my study of ethics, is that a lot of things are new and untested and untranslated. And so um, because uh, much of what's out there hasn't been done yet and hasn't been... Um, uh, you know, a lot of our important texts haven't even been translated yet. There's opportunity for growth. There's also opportunity for sort of mistakes and misjudgments. And um, it's it's a really, really, uh, you know, uh, exciting, uh, but sometimes confusing field of study. Um, it's, it's relatively small compared to other, you know, disciplines, but it's really, um, it, it makes it really interesting. Um, if, if you're a person who's inclined to do new things and try new, new ideas, um, you know, I, that's what I find the study of Islamic ethics uh, really so interesting is that there's, there's a lot yet to be done.